I'm Paul Zigo. This is Cinema for Cynics. 2017's Logan isn't really a sequel. It's not really a reboot either. I guess spinoff works best, but even that doesn't feel quite right. Logan is based loosely on the Old Man Logan series of comics, which follows an aged Wolverine as he undertakes his last missions in a dystopian possible future. The movie marks the last time we'll ever see Hugh Jackman as the Wolverine, or Patrick Stewart as Professor X, and they aren't really as you remember them, either. In this timeline, mutants are nearly extinct. It's been 25 years since a verified mutant has been born, and those that remain alive are mercilessly hunted. Logan has assumed this normal job as a limo driver and is secretly taking care of Professor X, who seems to barely remember who and what he is anymore. In addition to the Alzheimer's-like memory loss, Charles Xavier also suffers from some kind of telepathic seizures that can kill anyone in the vicinity. Logan keeps him in this large metal tanker to dampen the power of his telepathic fits. Logan himself is deeply unwell. His mutant healing factor isn't working as it used to, and his adamantium-laced skeleton is slowly poisoning him to death from the inside. It's a shame, really, as this is the first R-rated Wolverine we've gotten to see. I mean, finally, Logan is free to cuss and chop off heads and limbs to his heart's content, but he's scarcely able to fight anymore. The first scene of the film shows a group of thieves trying to steal the rims right off of Logan's limousine. When he tries to confront them, they damn near kill him. His berserker rage kicks in in time to save us from an early end of the movie, but the fact remains, a bunch of street goons almost waxed the Wolverine. Still, this more vulnerable Logan feels closer to the Wolverine we all wanted than any of the other eight portrayals Jackman has provided. No longer is he forced by the PG-13 rating to pull punches. He's allowed to be this brutal, foul-mouthed, rage-fueled guy with claws for the first time, and it feels really satisfying. It's just weakened at the seams by his terrible physical condition. Instead of having the obvious edge over most foes, Logan just barely squeaks by throughout the movie. All of my biggest gripes with the film flow forth from this. Finally, we get Wolverine in a movie, the real Wolverine, but he's old, and he's crusty, and most importantly, he's barely a shadow of his former self. Most of the movie is spent with Logan on the run from guys you'd expect him to carve up with very little issue. He becomes a protector of a young mutant named Laura, who we learn is Marvel character X-23, a mutant clone from Logan's own genetic material. Because of his dialed down powers and the posse hunting him, Logan begins to feel very much like a Western in presentation as he shepherds his violent little ward from place to place, hunted every step of the way. This isn't a bad thing. In fact, it's one of the things that makes the movie so cool. Well. Once you accept this new setting, Logan begins to really hit its stride. Action scenes are abrupt and violent, and you're given very little time to rest as the film begins to ramp up to its finale. Patrick Stewart as the addled Professor X really shines here as he attempts to remain a father figure to Logan, despite his deteriorating mental state. The movie, for the most part, is engaging and fun to watch. The finale itself, unfortunately, left me feeling slightly cheated. I won't ruin it here, but let's say it's a bit of an unsatisfying send-off for a character that feels like he's only just reached his potential on the silver screen. The movie left me wanting more, which I guess in this case isn't really a bad thing. I didn't get everything I wanted out of Logan, but I did finally get to see the Wolverine be the Wolverine, even if only briefly. And that alone is worth the price of admission. So watch it. And if you liked this review, subscribe for more. Leave a rating and help me spread the word about this channel. Thanks.